Now we're going to look at another painting by Caravaggio. Uh, this is the conversion of St. Paul, and it dates uh, to about 1601. Uh, for all of these Caravaggios, the date that I would probably use on an exam would be simply circa, or C period, it stands for about or around, uh, 1600. Yeah, one of them is 1599 to 1600, one of them is around 1601. Uh, 1600 is served perfectly. This is in the church of Santa Maria del Popolo in Rome, uh, which is, uh, Popolo is the people, so it's the Mary of the people. And the story of the conversion, the vision of St. Paul is told in Acts of the Apostles in chapter 9, verses 1 through 8, and then it continues with the story thereafter. This is a visionary scene. And we often talk about how important vision and ecstasy are in Baroque art. Uh, we've already seen uh, Bernini's Ecstasy of Santa Teresa. So here we're going to see the vision of St. Paul. Now, Paul was originally named Saul. He took on the name to show that he was a changed person uh, when he became a Christian. But he originally was persecuting the Christians. And so he was on the road to Damascus in order to imprison uh, some group of Christians when he heard a voice in heaven and he saw a blinding light, he had a vision and he heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And the vision, uh, the, the vision of Christ. Um, so the Bible says, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul was struck blind. So this blinding light was literally blinding to Saul, although not to any of the people who were with him. So we see him on the ground. His, the, uh, teneb the tenebroso, uh, the bright light, uh, in this case from a spiritual source, uh, Light here is truly shown as spiritual illumination as it shines down on the fallen Paul. And he is having a vision. Uh, he is dramatically foreshortened uh, with his head coming right out to our space, which, which is dramatic. You know, it makes us feel he's very close up to us, uh, like we may be one of the, uh, the people who were accompanying him. And, of course, uh, the tenebrism uh, is this darkness that is penetrated by the light. Now, the other people didn't see the vision. Acts 9, 7 says, Now the men who went in company with him stood amazed, hearing indeed a voice, but seeing no man. And, as you can see, the groom isn't looking up to the vision. He's not seeing the vision. He's sort of looking down and saying, what's going on, master? Uh, and uh, he's, you know, he's, he's one of those figures that we talk about uh, sometimes that uh, sometimes Caravaggio can even have ugly, quote, figures. Uh, so here is this uh, man who, uh, I, I, I think he's the same uh, model that was used for the first version of St. Matthew. But at any rate, he's got the distended veins. He's got the furrowed brow. Uh, you know, he, he is a groom. He could be mucking out stables. Um, and then, of course, there's the interesting figure of the horse, which right he's in, once very close to us. Uh, it looks almost like dangerous, like he could step on, on Saul. Uh, but uh, he is, uh, uh, he's not doing so. He's being, I guess, very careful not to. And, of course, this is a very naturalistic image. 